Hi there folks and welcome to Paint Along with Matthew Palmer. Now in this series, I'm joined in the studio by three novice painters who have not really painted before. Let's say a big hello to Mandy. Hello. Nigel. Hello. And Harry. Hello. And let's get started. This week's painting is a seascape with a sunset sky and a castle on the beach. And the techniques you'll be learning are painting a sunset sky, lifting out highlights on buildings and creating reflections in water. Right folks, let's get started with this painting using this water just to wet the paper. Now you can see the water looks a bit dark there, but it's okay when you put the water on. And as always, you're just bringing it straight through there, just wetting it down. With it being a sunset, the colours need to come through the water or the sea as well, so plenty of water covered through. So this is the first colour, nice and bright yellow, and you can see how rich that is straight away. I'm going to take it up until it fades away and then more colour, take it down into the sea. So it's going to reflect those colours. So a nice, rich, bright yellow. Just a little bit of preparation there, folks. I've got a 5p wrapped in some tissue, which you know about Where this one. Yeah, we've done you can buy before, these, actually, from website. £4 each if you've not got one. What, a penny? Five no, it's P. 5p. <laughs> but you get a stack of tissue as well, so it's not bad, is it? The Matthew Palmer Sun Painting Gadget. That's what it's called. We'll get some burnt sienna, burnt sienna at the top, and bring that down into the yellow. So again, it's just your wallpaper paste type thing, just sort of sweeping the colours in, and you see the warmth coming through there. Because it's reflecting in the sea, just a little tiny bit of that coming down in there as well. There we go. So that's two nice colours straight away. Clean brush, natural blue, dab on tissue first. Bring that across the top and bring it down to the burnt sienna. You can see how I continue to go down with this because I want the colours to all blend together. Just a little bit at the bottom would be nice as well. And then we'll put some crimson red, alizarin crimson, loosely around where the water's going to be. So I'll put some red there. If you need to dampen your brush and wipe it over tissue to blend it in, remember the one where you squeeze out the water? You can do that quite easily. And you can just squeeze that through and get all the colours working together. So the red comes down into the sea, making sure all those paints are all nicely flowing together. And then we'll get the tissue with the coin on. You can just think we'll put the the sun there, give it a dab, that's your basic sun, which we can reflect in the water a little bit later on. And then using a smaller brush with the grey, pick the paint up, dab off the excess, put some silhouetted cloud just by twisting the paint. So the brush is flat to the paper and you can twist. And making a definite silhouette, you can sweep those lines away. Just going to bring something coming in from this side as well, almost flat to the paper. And you can soften away colours quite easily. You can Take it slightly one step further by using some more of the colour, a lizard crimson colour, but not too much of it. And just add a little bit of warmth into your clouds. You know, squeeze out that paint, it's like I've cut myself there, but squeeze out that colour. You've made and a mess now. And just work it in. It's got to reflect the warmth, and you've all seen the sunsets before, and you can see where the colours reflect. It's quite important, I think, on, a, on an evening sky to get the light shining through. Leave that to dry, folks, and we'll see how Nigel gets on in the hot seat. Right, folks, it's time for Nigel to get his sky painted in. So, we've got his colours mixed, and we'll put the water on, wet it through all the way, top to bottom. Let's get your 5p wrapped in tissue, £4 each then. Now, Nigel's good at checking, see whether he's missed any bits, so he's got good eyes. In fact, he's got two good eyes. Bright yellow first, brightest colours first, thick aureolin. Bring it down and take it up as well. Using burnt sienna and bring that down, wallpaper paste. Fill it into the edges, bring it into the yellow. Okay. So it'll come right down to the bottom as well. Clean brush and blue at the top into the burnt sienna. What we'll do is get the crimson red roughly a third of the way up the picture really. And then you can do your magic stamp. Don't relax just yet because we need to put some silhouetted cloud just by twisting the paint. So just dab it on your tissue first. And then it's putting your brush flat to your paper, almost like this, and twisting in from the sides, making it smaller as it comes down. Just starting to dry at this point, so you've got to work to your picture and do whatever works best on your painting. Dampen your brush, dab it on tissue, and just sort of horizontal brush strokes with a bit of water just to soften everything in. And of course, you've got to make that decision whether you want to bring the red into it. Now that is optional. I mean, it's like air conditioning. It's an optional extra. Um, Just a touch. Yeah. 
it's not bad time, as it is. A little bit and just dab it on there first so it's not soaking. We kind of got out of the situation there because it was dry. Yeah. You've sorted it out with the water and that's great. So let's have a quick recap of that stage. For the sky, working the aureolin and then the burnt sienna and the natural blue at the top. Add in some alizarin crimson towards the bottom. Use a coin wrapped in tissue to dab out the sun. Twist in the grey to give the cloud effect and add some warmth with the crimson. Right then folks, while Mandy and Harry are painting their sky, let's have a look at how reflections work. I've done this basic landscape there and what we'll do is we'll have a look at the way that you gauge the height of the reflection. I'll start off first of all just by putting a little bit of water in the water because let's face it, you can't be at wet water then really. So I'll wet it first, working wet into wet, large brush. And then just to get a little bit of the blue from the sky and just work this in, this is natural blue. Doesn't want too much of this, just a tiny bit. Just at the bottom there. Just so the sky reflects. It's going the opposite way around if you think about it, like a mirror. A smaller brush of number six I could put the green on. Now what you do is you look at the size of the trees and you measure this with your fingers and what you do is you work from the bottom of the tree and that gives you the loose height of the reflection. A lot of people seem to want to go from the water bank and this makes them too large. And just very lightly, imagine the flow of the water working from side to side, bring this across. And you can say, I've not got to do every single bit of detail because you don't seem to see that with reflections. It's just the soft colour, it's the movement in the water. That's the tallest one and so on, working all the way across the picture. So very lightly, just working across. And then wiggle your brush, keeping your lines horizontal as you do this. And you can say it's just reflecting nice there. We've also put a couple of fence posts just there as well, just to try and give you the impression because if a fence post goes that way, the reflection goes the opposite way, it's like a mirror again. So using a nice dark natural grey with a small brush, very thick colour. This pose goes off towards the left, so the reflection goes the same way, off towards the left. You can see it's just starting to reflect there as it comes down. And finish off just with one or two little horizontal lines. This is natural grey, just one or two horizontal lines just to give you the finishing touch. Always keep your lines straight when you do this. And there we go, a very quick and simple example of how reflections work in watercolours. 